Good afternoon. Let us start with chapter 7 hypothesis. Suppose today you have come to the college and you have lecture in logic but you have not brought your logic exercise book. Since it is with your friend who is absent today. So now you are faced with a problem. Then what will you do? The moment you come to know that the logic exercise book is not with you certain thoughts start entering your mind but these thoughts are not random thoughts they are related to your previous knowledge that you have so what are you exactly doing you are just guessing to solve the problem this guess work is called hypothesis the word hypothesis is derived from the greek word hypo meaning under and thaitinai meaning to place hypothesis literally means placing under coffee has defined hypothesis as an attempt at explanation a provisional supposition made in order to explain scientifically some facts or phenomenon from this definition certain characteristics of hypothesis follow first is that it is an important stage in scientific method you already know that there are six stages in hypothetical hypothetical deductive method first is observation second is feeling of a problem third is formulation of hypothesis as a tentative solution fourth is collection of additional facts and modification of hypothesis if necessary fifth is deductive development of hypothesis and sixth is verification of hypothesis from these stages we get an idea how hypothesis is important in science the scientist goes to the nature to collect information from it when he observes the nature he finds no meaning to the events of nature as he perceives no connection between them hence he is faced with a problem you know that every scientific investigation begins with a problem which the science which the scientist or the investigator tries to solve in his attempt to find a solution to the problem what the scientist does he assumes the possible explanation on the basis of which he can start his research but the possible explanation that the scientist gives is based on the knowledge that he accumulates by observation and this possible explanation is temporary and has to be tested it is called hypothesis hypothesis is like a guiding post which gives direction to the scientific investigation it places clear and specific goals acts as a guide to concentrate on the area of research to collect relevant data to collect related tools and techniques that are to be used to gather that that data and to solve the problem <clears throat> so it makes scientific investigation very systematic and well organized it also helps the scientist to save money and time now let us see how neptune was discovered in science on the basis of the law of gravitation the astronomers had calculated the orbits of the known planets but it happened that in the year 1820 bovard observed that the planet uranus was not moving in its calculated orbit it had deviated from its orbit so the problem was felt he tried to solve the problem by giving the possible explanation 
that there may be an unknown planet beyond uranus which was disturbing the gravitational force of uranus this hypothesis gave direction to the research the astronomers now knew in which direction or in which area they have to do the observation and which telescope they could use the two men adams from england and leverrier from france calculated the size and the position of the unknown planet on the basis of the law of gravitation then what they did was a great berlin telescope was turned on the spot where a new planet was seen it was named as neptune so the hypothesis helped them to discover a new planet neptune now second characteristic is that hypothesis attempts at explanation of facts you know that at the initial stage hypothesis claims to explain the observed facts which the scientists are unable to explain but the hypothesis does not explain the facts unless it is verified and confirmed we know that on the basis of this possible explanation only the investigation uh, investigator proceeds to collect data through his observations and may perform an experiment to verify it thus the hypothesis becomes an explanation to the problem once it is confirmed now let us see how smallpox vaccine was invented by edward jenner since childhood edward jenner had seen that all villagers were suffering from smallpox but he had heard that the milkmaids were getting cowpox blisters on their hands but did not develop smallpox now the problem was how is that the milkmaids did not develop smallpox though they were staying in the same village to solve this problem edward jenner gave a possible explanation that the pus in the blisters might have protected the milkmaid from getting smallpox but this was just an attempt made and not the final solution it had to be tested so edward jenner what did he do he performed an experiment he extracted the pus from the blisters of the milkmaid and injected in the body of a young boy then he observed that the boy did not develop smallpox hence his hypothesis which was an attempt made was proved to be true and it became an explanation to the problem now we come to the third characteristic that hypothesis is a provisional supposition since the hypothesis is put forward at the initial stage of scientific inquiry it is just a guideline and not a permanent solution at this stage there is no data collected which could support or reject it so it is an assumption done for temporary period which is further tested by collecting more information through observation and performing experiment if after testing it is found to be a right solution then it is no more provisional and it will be accepted until a better hypothesis takes its place now the hypothesis that electricity is a fluid is provisional supposition the problem was that the scientist could not understand the nature of electricity yet they thought that they could carry out the investigation 
how could they carry by comparing electricity with the fluid because electricity resembles the fluid in mainly two characteristics that is facility and rapidity it means both flow rapidly the hypothesis that electricity is a fluid is provisional and was not proposed as an explanation of the flow of electric current through its conductor because the main difference between the two was that the water adds weight to the body through which it flows whereas electricity does not so the hypothesis remained provisional and had either to be modified or rejected now we come to the fourth characteristic of hypothesis it is an organizing principle we know that at the initial stage the scientist goes to the nature to collect information from it but he finds no meaning to the events as he perceives no connection between them they appear isolated scattered and unrelated to each other it is the hypothesis which organizes them in a systematically meaningful pattern let us see how newton's law of gravitation helped to organize the events in nature one day when newton was sitting under an apple tree an apple fell on his head then on the ground he observed that all the apples and the other objects fall on the ground so a thought came to his mind that the earth may be having some force which pulls all the objects towards it thus he discovered the law of gravitation this law of gravitation could explain the three events that is falling of an apple from the tree the movements of the planets in their orbits round the sun and the tides of the sea we know that we have high tide and low tide this is all because of the gravitational force of the earth thus this law of gravitation organized all the three events of nature in a systematically meaningful pattern but before the law of gravitation was discovered these three events were having no meaning or they were not connected to each other now we come to the fifth hypothesis is the result of rational activity though the cultural patterns in which a person is born and brought up that is his environment plays an important role in suggesting an hypothesis yet the investigator what he does he starts with his available knowledge that is the evidences that he has at hand then what he will do he will examine all the possibilities that he could probably that could probably explain the phenomenon thus he will formulate a hypothesis which is not just a random guess but a result of rational activity means he will think over the knowledge what he has and he will relate that knowledge to the problem so lot of reasoning is involved in his thinking so what is a rational activity rational activity is the investigator's productive idea or plan that is worth doing to get solution to the problem in the case of covid 19 a scientist puts forth a hypothesis that it is due to a virus a micro organism which is transmitted transmitted through water droplets from an infected person is the result of rational activity sixth is the last characteristic that is it is the result of keen and creative imagination hypothesis is the result of scientist's creative imagination and his talents but not 
simply a product of his dreams or imagination in air where the knowledge is not related to the problem let us see how the canned food was discovered by nicolas peppert in the year 1795 nicolas peppert observed that napoleon bonaparte regularly shipped food for his military men but what used to happen that the food used to get spoiled by the time it reached the military men means it reached its destination so nicolas started wondering why this is happening and a thought came to his mind that if the food is boiled and sealed in a glass jar with a cork then it will not get spoiled this was his creative imagination and he had to conduct an experiment to see whether whatever he has put forth as a solution is true or not so he conducted an experiment to test this hypothesis and found that the food did not get spoiled as the germs in the food were killed by boiling the food and also the outside germs could not enter the food as the glass jar was sealed with a cork this hypothesis was the result of nicolas keen and creative imagination which led to the invention of canned food so in this part of hypothesis we have studied the meaning of hypothesis its definition and six characteristics thank you